final between Lucy Souter, the champion in 1985, but only just recovered to full fitness after a serious viral complaint. Nice to see Lucy back. And Suzanne Horner, the surprise winner in the semi-final against the defending and the world champion, Martin Lemoyne. Now, Lucy Souter won the first game 9-3. We join it in the second with Souter leading 3-11 serving. Martin Lemoyne joins Tony Gubber in the commentary box at Newcastle. Yes, sir. Really love. Oh, well, that's what she needs, an opportunity to show that uh, she can play the shots as well. Now, love three. Susan Horner, 25 years of age. Well, she enjoyed the best win of her career when One, she beat the world three. champion, Martine, in the semi-finals. She suddenly hit a little purple patch, two, came back three. from one, two down to win that semi-final. Oh, and again, some terrific little shots from the girl from Wakefield, making her debut in a major final. But having looked a little bit tentative and nervous when she lost the opening game 3-9, much sharper and more confident now. Um, four, three. Left, left. Left, left. Four, three. From the right. Big occasion too, this for Lucy Five. Souter, the champion Three. back from 1985. She's had a, something like an 18 month layoff with illness, the glandular fever. No let. No let. And now. Uh, Reached the Five. final on one other occasion in 1987 when she lost to Lisa Ropi. You have to go and keep that ball. <laughs> you have to go and get that ball. <laughs> note of surprise in the voice of Suzanne as she gets her instructions Three, from the referee Bill Goldsmith you have to go and get the ball at least you have to try Down. yes as soon as Four, uh, Suzanne five. hits loose balls Lucy's in there with these killing drop shots and cross courts and really, Suzanne really had to pin Lucy in the backhand corner, forehand and backhand. Down. Five all. Five apiece, second game. Best of five. Good drop, maybe a little bit lucky. Yes, yeah, Suzanne's actually now Under waiting for Lucy to make the mistake. She's being a lot more patient. She's floating the ball around a lot more. and She's really showing that she's got quite a lot of time to play with.
Got up. What a clever boast. Yes, that was a fantastic shot by Lucy. Both players a little Six bit five. tense at the moment. The score is rather close and, you know, it could be anyone's game at the moment. Yes, it was too tight, wasn't it? Beautifully judged again. Seven, five. And after a long, attritional second game, Lucy Souter with an advantage of two points. Eight, five, game ball. So, Lucy Souter, game ball to lead two games to none in the final. Yes, left. And Suzanne just looks a little bit dejected Eight at the moment. She needs ball. to pick herself up. Oh, that was a little bit half-hearted, wasn't it? That was a sign, really, of the dominance that Lucy's exerting. She takes the second game and now leads two games to love. And one would have to say, Martine looks to be in control and on her way to the title. Yeah, she uh, took the last few points of that game with tremendous drop shots and really put Suzanne under an awful lot of pressure. And really, Suzanne hasn't got an answer at the moment. We now join the third game. Lucy Souter leading 3-2, but it's uh, Suzanne Horner serving. Suzanne at last with the ball. Oh, that was right in the corner. It absolutely died. And out. Three all. Nothing she could do about that. Now she's got to fight to get it back again. Three all. Third game. Sutra ahead 2-0. Lucy's asking for at least a let. Yes, let. Yes, let. Oh, took his time. Ooh, Bill Goldsmith. Suzanne may feel a little aggrieved. 
Yes, I think uh, Lucy was lucky to get a let there. The ball was very, very tight to the wall and Lucy would have had to make a huge effort to get that up. sometimes go against you mm. and they're really at the moment trying not to make mistakes they're trying to keep the rallies going and and wait till one or other makes a mistake Well, as in the second game, it really is finely balanced now, and uh, Suzanne Horner knows she's really got to get into this game at some stage and start to make an impression, otherwise her chance of the national title will have gone. to Miss Suter and Suzanne looks very dispirited. Yeah, she's she's giving away a, a lot of you know easy balls and you know Lucy's just taking the strokes and that could prove fatal for Suzanne in the end. Suzanne will come Six away from three. there feeling that again the ball didn't go very sweetly for her. She would come right out of the corner. Suzanne's really making far too many mistakes Seven, now and, and all Lucy really has to do is, is keep the ball in play, I think, to win this title. It's a cruel decision, Eight, three, but it really five, reflects four. in a way the way the final has gone. Perhaps Susan Horner left too much of herself in the semi-final victory over the world champion Martine Lemoyne. Championship point. 
And that beautiful drop shot into the right corner gives Lucy Souter the ladies' title for the second time. She won it in 1985 when she was 18, lost in the final in 87, and now has come back from illness and problems for well, nearly two years to win the title for a second time. Yes, well done, Lucy. Nice to see her back to full fitness. We'll have the men's final for you. Brian Beeson against Del Harris. That's coming up a little bit later. In the championship in 1986, he's playing in front of his home supporters. And he's playing against England's number one, the top seed, Del Harris, winner two years ago, but he was unable to defend it because of injury last year. We join it in the fourth game. Beeson leads two games to one, but Harris leads 2-1 on points in the fourth. Commentator, Tony Gather. Joy to see a shot like that, isn't it? Yeah, beautiful backhand drop shot. Open the face of his racket and put it away into the net. now beginning to run Beeson rather ragged. And out for two. No luck. No let hand out too fine. Oh, it was there, wasn't it? That was a mistake. Five, two. Well, Del Harris completed his semi-final victory over Robert Owen in a record 24 minutes. Three games to love. These two have been on court in the final now, over 75 minutes. Oh, lovely change of direction. Completely deceived, Beeson. Right side, 6 2. He was never going to catch that. And we look to be heading, Jonah, to a fifth and final game. Yes, I think France will probably now gather himself for a final effort at the beginning of the fifth. Two. 7 2, massive lead. 
He's not going to pull back from from that in this game. It's two game ball. Game ball to make it level. Two games apiece. And that's down into the tin. Beeson's already on his way off the court. And is Del Harris going to come back from having been two games to love down to win this oh, national title? Nine, two. It will require a fifth off, and final off. game to decide the 1989 champion. Surely it'll be a let, but uh, the question is, how much is it taken out of Beeson? He's ran right into the back of Harrison. No <laughs> let. No let? Mm. Well. No let. Well, I think the ref was right. Um, he did go into the back, but that's not the point. The point was that uh, an unbelievably tight drop shot was played, and Brown was just a little bit too far back to cover it. If Del Harris can get a firm grip on this fifth and final, two nil up already, three or four, and Beeson, who's already shown signs of wilting, may well find that there's nothing left. Dell's just got to be a good fisherman here, really sensible. He's got the man on the end of the line. Just quietly reel him in. Yes, he done well to get to the first one, Beeson, but... Uh, there was nothing he could do there. He was hopelessly out of position. And Del Harris, having been remembered, down by two games to love and trailing love four in the third, has from that point begun to make the final his own. Slipped a little bit there, Dale Harris, as he tried to get to that. Just lost one of his feet. Uh, perhaps a little bit of dust or perspiration on the court. Just didn't get the purchase that he needed. Love three. He's looking down the road of no return, Brian Beeson. Love three, he's got the ball. Beeson's first point. One, three. And the face tells the story of the amount of effort and exertion.
Ron Beeson still pursuing the original game plan of getting it tight to the walls. Hitting the ball fairly high on the front wall. Not giving Dell too much pace to work off. Quite brilliant in the first two games he did it too. And he's cut. He is coming back into it. Two, three. Shot from Harris, unexpectedly into the tin. Makes it level, three all. What an unbelievable shot. I don't think even Beeson could believe it. The audience looked at themselves. They waited. <laughs> I don't think Dell really knew what had happened either, Tony. I think he just managed to get his racket round it and it sort of squeezed it out and it went just above the tin off the sidewall. Unbelievable, really. and he waited to play that shot there, Harris. He left it to the last possible Four, minute. Three. So he had Beeson hopelessly in the wrong position. <laughs> He's asking for a let that's important. No, you wouldn't have got that, Brian. No left. No left. Well, it's gone against him. I don't think he's surprised, but I suppose he had to try. Yeah, he said he was only asking. Uh, he had to try. The ball bounced a bit, but he wouldn't have got that either. Dell forging ahead now. Just on the top of the tin, the post didn't quite come off. Six three. And again, the deficit is three points. He got back from love three to make it three all, but now Beeson trails again three six. Oh, lovely drive! That took Harris by surprise. And we had this in the semi-final with Paul Carter, the champion last year. Brian looked as though he was down and out and then a couple of ferocious returns of serve brought him back in came through to win oh that was tired and down six three well, just referring back to what Jonah was talking about, he was actually 4-8 down in the fifth in the semi. Had a match point against him, Beeson. Came back to win it 10-8 in the fifth. Joy to watch, isn't it, Jonah? Magnificent. Yes, the 
Dream of a drive down the wall. He was fairly tight on the wall, but Seven, three. he hit it like an arrow on a low line and left Brian for dead. Yeah, you just feel as though Beeson just three. couldn't quite Much dig ball. deep enough when it mattered. It's championship ball. He's asked for a let. The crowd think it's a point to Beeson. No let. No let, so he's got the ball back. He well, saved a championship point. No let. No let. No let. Three in. Now, Beeson with the ball. <laughs> he can't afford to lose it again. He's asking for stroke. Well, it was it was given a stroke, but in fact they're playing a let from the previous stroke. Oh, he ran him ragged there, didn't he, Harris? He had him at the back of the court, and he's got the ball back. Three. So, championship point again to Del Harris. Oh, it's down. Harris takes it, having come back. Trailing two games to love. He wins it in the fifth. 9-3. And Beeson, such a hero, such a triumph. And the final lasted an hour and a half. And the number one seed, the favourite for the crown, Del Harris, Britain's number one player, wins the title that he lifted in 1987 and couldn't defend last year because of illness. I think he's going to win it a few more times as well. That was Jonah Barrington with Tony Gerber, our commentator. Met in the 1982 final, incidentally, with Alison Cummings winning on that occasion. It's the best of five games. As we join it, it's one game all. Uh, Jonah Barrington, the former world number one, is commentating along with Stuart Storey. A well, one game all, and uh, in this third game, service to Alison Cummings the number three seed some indifferent squash uh, played in the first two games uh, Martin Lemoyne uh, winning the first game quite comfortably uh, then coming under her own pressure in the uh, second game, allowing yes, uh, Alison Cummings to get well away, she came back but then Double. gave a couple of very bad errors at the end to allow the Surrey uh, girl to come through to take that second game so it's uh, even Steven at the moment. Best of five games. Yes, let. Yes, let. Love all. Well, we've not seen either of these two players playing at the very best, uh, Jonah, so far. But uh, of the two, Alison Cummings must be the more worried. Not up. Stop. A little bit of force down. Doubt about that. One love. Her ball was down. Yes, Alison Cummings uh, did very well to snatch back the second game and, and level it. I, I just feel that she should be more confident now, Stuart, because uh, 
she had a really rough passage to start with. Didn't look really a winner for a good part of the second game, but she's well in the match, so she should Down. gain in confidence. To love. But it's extraordinary the way this uh, match has gone so far. Um, they've only been on court. Uh, we've had the first two games just a little over 16 minutes. It's uh, flown past, really, and neither player has found true form. Uh, Cummings has not found the depth in her stroke, and uh, Lemoynen has uh, had uh, uncharacteristic Three errors, down. and uh, neither player playing the sort of squash that one would expect in a final, yet at least. Alison now getting one or two really good shots under her belt. Martine will be kicking herself that she didn't force the issue perhaps in the second game because she had a good chance to get a really big lead. The Surrey girl now is starting to trouble her short. She had a very deceptive game in the front court. Yes, Led. Yes, Led. Four left. Left. There's uh, Alison Cummings, uh, has a fine lob and uh, a nice drop shot on her day. And then she's gone into a four-love lead in this third game. And fortunes certainly have changed. And we were saying at the very beginning that uh, perhaps, uh, during that no first game, that perhaps the semi-final, which uh, Alison had to play against Lisa Lope, the, the number ball. one seed, um, took uh, too much out of her. But uh, at last, she's starting to come back in and look as though uh, she feels that she could win, uh, and really, Lemoynen is giving her that opportunity at the moment. Yes, let. Yes, let. One four. And Martin has got a, a considerable capacity to take the ball on the volley well around the middle of the court, and she's got to capitalise on that. Yes, let. Yes, well, you've been one saying four. several times, Jonah, that the, the depth left. of shot from Alison Cummings has not been satisfactory, and uh, we're not seeing any real change in that yet. Uh, she's the ball dropping nicely in the midcourt for Lemoynen to execute. Having said that, that was a very nice shot. In the nick, right and side of the court. One. And that's the result of all that. Four to one. Stroke to Miss Cummings. Stroke to Miss Cummings. 5-1. Martine is a bit of a, a mess now. She's lost all her rhythm and critical stage of the match. And that will not do her any harm. Hundo, well, just looking five. at the stature of the two girls, uh, Cummings is five feet eight, and Martina uh, Lemoynen five feet ten. So there's a lot of power in that frame, and uh, as uh, as you suggest occasionally, Jonah, that she ought to really demonstrate that power a little more and to use those strengths. Two five. Down. Three five. Suddenly started to swing again. A couple of good volleys from Martine. Perfect backhand volley straight into the neck. Scarcely an angle to play, it, but she put it away five. really beautifully. And you can just look at that look in her face there. She moved across to this uh, side of the court into our camera. That It was a bit more positive, uh, a bit more aggressive uh, and meaningful. And uh, one felt that she got a great deal of confidence out of that last shot. And uh, squash is a bit more positive, down. although that was, I think that was down. down a bit more business-like, I think, is a way to describe it. Five four, just to remind you, in this third game. Down. 
And dare I say it, the longest rally of the match, I think. 6-4. Yes, it was uh, an attempt at a boast there that didn't quite come off. Out. Well, that's out too. Very sloppy Seven play four. indeed. And uh, Alison Cummings now at 7-4 uh, in this third game. Oh. Down. Hand out, 4-7. Stroke to Miss Cummings. Stroke to Miss Cummings. Well, it really looked and at one stage as though four. Martina Lemoyne was going to sweep Alison Cummings off the court. Uh, but it's changed totally. Yes, let. Yes, let. 7-4. Well, another opportunity to go nearer that... Uh, Nine points needed to secure the third game. Stroke to Miss Cummings. Stroke to Miss Cummings. Well, I Eight to four, game ball. don't have to tell you what uh, Martina's thinking there because that's the scoreline that greets her and uh, Alison Cummings looking for the second game. Oh, and she's got it. Well, two games to one. Game Alison Miss Cummings, Cummings leads. Nine, Miss Cummings leads two games to one. Well, a lot of questions to be asked and answered in that uh, short break uh, for Martine Lemoynen. She really has let this match slip at the moment. At uh, two games to one in arrears after winning the first so easily. And the last point was uh, another error from the taller of the two players. Two seconds. Miss Cummings leads two games to one, love all. Hand out, so three, love nine, all. Nine, six, nine, four, the first uh, three games, best of five. And uh, they've been on court for around uh, half an hour. No let, one, one love. I don't know. I mean, what instructions would uh, Martina have got in that uh, interval there? I mean, uh, quite clearly it's an important one. Well, she certainly needed to be told to get a, a deep driving going to the back of the court. What she Stroke was doing so much better early on was getting a, quite a lot of pace and pressure to depth. In other words, near to the back wall and... She's got to start doing that again to try and build up her attack. Because it's all bits and pieces uh, in the third. And, and it started to, to become a bit of a shambles in the second. And she, she's now got to really put some One work all. in. And we've got to find out now just how hungry she is to win this title. And another problem. And Alison patently now with more confidence and starting to think a great deal better. Placing her shots much more skillfully. But a fine backhand volley from Martin. Brave shot. Good reward. Hand out, 1-2. Yes, that was well appreciated by this uh, audience. Uh, We've had to wait uh, quite a long time for the sort of skills that we normally associate with uh, Martina. Yes, let. Yes, let. One, two. Strange combination, Martina. The born in Guernsey, lives in Germany, and represents Hampshire. Yes, 
Davis. That was beautifully taken. To all. And out to all. She misread that badly. And uh, looked to be in control, was in the right place. Uh, to totally all. in the wrong place there and uh, caught off guard. Out. Three, two. Casual looking uh, Alison Cummings. Uh, she really hasn't uh, seemed to be moving too well on the court, uh, Jonah. Yes, she always looks as if, you know, she's maybe not making every effort to sort of yes, get like, there, but yes, like two, three. It's, a, it's a very deceptive style. She moves in, into the front court at times, you know, with a very fair degree of athleticism and I think she surprises the, the crowd and she certainly surprises her opponent and she's very economical most of the time Real. too Stuart she takes her time with her service and gathers herself seen quite so much of uh, Alison Cummings around but uh, she first competed in these championships back in 1978 she went out in the first round then to Angela Smith but um, so she has been around she's got the experience but uh, as you were saying she disappears and then comes back on the scene uh, Martine Lemoyne uh, and Lisa Ropey very much the two dominant figures along with Lucy Suter of course who isn't uh, competing in these uh, championships No let. No let. Martine would be Four, three. very no. disappointed with that because she was coming up uh, quickly behind and uh, Alison made no effort at all to move after she played a stroke. So I think that uh, Martine was very unlucky. And she has got the service back with a good deep ball to the back corner. Three, four. And when she does that, she really does look For all. very professional and, and authoritative, but it's too infrequently in this match. And really, when you look at the statistics, there are only five points. Five, four. Between, well, there were five points, now four, between uh, winning a chance to go into the fifth game or losing the final completely. So it's a very close thing at the moment. Down. She's tried to scoop that ball just to the left, six, four. the top of the tin. 6-4. Four. Fourth game. Well, the ball went up. Seven, four. Uh, she let out a whoop because she didn't really know where it had gone. It just sneaked above the tin. She's on a little bit of a run here. Suddenly the match. Picture changes. No, you could have played that. No let. No let. 8-4 game ball. Well, a chance to stay in now at uh, game ball to Martin Lemoynen at 8-4, take it to two games all, and that's it, surely. <laughs> Martine, not waiting to see if there was any decision, marched straight for the door. 
Fourth game to Miss Lemonian, 9-4. The games are to all. Well, Martin had obviously found her form there because she... Carter is 5-4 up. Jonah Barrington and Stuart Storey once again. And out, 5-4. Has to go down as an unforced error, four, that. Four. Five, four. Yeah, he muttered something about the bounce. He certainly was an unusual miss hit for him. Stroke to Carter, six, four. Let six four. Full variety and range of strokes we're seeing here as both players seek the ascendancy. And a mighty backhand kill straight, flattened it into the Seven, neck, four. opened the face of his racket. Absolute winner. Too tight to the side wall. Eight, four, game ball. Brings him game, game ball. Amazing recovery yet again in the second game of a match. Asking for the left. No left. No left. No left. And uh, that's game. Nine four. A little grimace on the face of Harvey, but it's one game all. Well, Paul Carter certainly played uh, a stylish game in that uh, second game to take it nine four. And okay. uh, must realise that he has a chance here. 